Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. If you like what I do, what I say, please subscribe, like and share. Um, today I'm talking about a topic only because I've been bombarded with videos and information about the cockpit countries. And I'm kind of thinking, well, isn't it rinsed out already? So many people talking about it. What's it got to do with me, an English girl in UK, and regardless of the fact that my parents are Jamaican, I couldn't understand what the hype was all about. But anyway, I said, since so many people are drawing my attention to it, I need to have a look at it. Because sometimes you can dig your, no your, no your head in the sand and think, oh, well, it's got nothing to do with me when it has. And just because I'm all the way here in the UK doesn't mean that what's happening to inhabitants in Jamaica isn't significant. So, what did I find out? Well, I found out a lot today because I only started researching today. And what I found out was that there's an area in Jamaica that they call cockpit country. And it's full of the most valuable and limited resources in the world. It's got white, white stone. It's got ore. And it's got bauxite. And I've written down the, the, the sources of these three, the, the three main minerals. Now, what's happening is that it seems that in 2014, was it? Um, oh, 2004, 2004, mining permission was given to mine this area. And the thing is, it was done without the environmental assessment and it was kind of done quite secretly. I think um, from what I understand is that it's only come to the fore because it's, it's supposed to be starting on the 19th of September. They're supposed to be going ahead with the mining in a couple of weeks' time. And so the people who are in the cockpit country, they're thinking about the farming and how they're going to um, plant their yam and where they're going to go to school and their homes and all of these things, you know, as far as the prospectors are concerned, are sentimental. They don't have any monetary value. What they're digging up has monetary value. So they don't care that you can't plant your yams. You don't have no schools. You don't have no homes. They'll give you compensation. And as far as they're concerned, you can go and live elsewhere. Leave this land to us and we'll take it over. But the problem is with the cockpit country is that 40% of the fresh water comes from there. And what will happen with the mining is what will happen to all other countries that have been mined. There'll be water pollution. There'll be chemical damage. And I understand that Zambia has just been successful in suing a UK mining company called Vendenta. Because one th I, don't, I think it's up to about 2,000 residents or inhabitants, their lives are either died or they were sick where the water was contaminated, they were poisoned, and because the mining company did not use due diligence in protecting not only the water or the resources, but the people. So that um, case came out in 2015. And Vedanta apparently was trying to get it tried in Zambia. But according to the people, they were saying that people are too corrupt in Zambia and they won't win. And they won their case. And now it's being tried in the UK. The UK company is being tried in the UK. I'm going to put the link. Doc, I was listening to Dr. Mumbi today. And I got that information from her. And it's coincidental because I wasn't even um, looking for it. But it's amazing when the, te when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And I, had, I didn't know anything about mining in countries or islands in the Caribbean until today. It wasn't something I was really interested. But it's amazing the amount of information you get given once you start looking. 
Germany. I understand that there was a city in Germany where they just wiped out with looking for lignite coal, which is the brown coal, and which is supposed to be a cheaper way for energy. And they tore down all the churches, paid the um, villagers money, and they just destroyed the town. It's just a load of rubble. So it's not even like they do something with it afterwards. They just leave it all dug up. And if they burst pipes or if any of the copper, and the thing is, if any of the copper or the gold or whatever it is that's in that white stone gets into the water, that water is, is, is damaged, is poisoned. Now, I don't know how many people, how, how much, I mean, I hear people talking about bauxite, bauxite, bauxite. But I'm not quite sure how much the Jamaican knows that the valuable the valuable commodities they have and resources in the cockpit country apart from bauxite. So what did I write down here? Um, okay, let's start off with I'm gonna go back and forth, but we'll start off with white limestone. So the white limestone according to science in com is used for calcium carbonate it's called it's used for curbing pollution it's used to remove sulfur dioxide from coal plant smokestacks it's used to increase nutrients availability fish growth and alkalinity it's used for water treatment and it helps to reduce excessive iron from water and reduces water ph so that's the white limestone that's all over the cockpit country. Um, the source of geology.com says limestone is used to produce Portland cement as an aggregate in concrete and asphalt and is an enormous, an enormous array of other products, making it truly a versatile commodity. And then we have ore. My God, ore. Apparently, there is a limited supply of ore on the planet. Not just in the world, you know. The planet. Ore in Jamaica, in the cockpit country. According to glescrap.com, there's a limited supply of metal ore on the planet and recycling reduces the amount of virgin ore needed to be mined by manufacturers and needs to be conserved. The most valuable ore deposits contain metal crucial to industry and trade, like copper, gold and iron. The Jamaicans are saying, what do I want to dig out with land for? What, we want, what do I want to dig it out for? Copper, gold, and iron. And the thing is, as far as these prospectors, they feel as though you're just wasting the land. They're looking at these Jamaicans saying, what they doing? They're just planting yam. They're just sitting on this gold mine. And they're not doing anything with it. We know the value. So therefore, we'll make a little deal with the government and we'll take it from them because they can go anywhere and plant yam, as far as they're concerned. But gold, copper, iron is in the cockpit country. Copper ore is mined for a variety of industrial uses. Copper is an excellent conductor of electricity and is used as electrical wire. So, you want to know why they want to dig out the cockpit country? It's not no dibby dibby reason. Bauxite. According to AustralianBauxite.com, the Gibbsite mineral is alumina, trihydrate, and is the most valuable of all alumina or minerals because it readily dissolves at low temperatures and pressures at the alumina, alumina refinery stage called the Bayer process. Gibbsites bauxites are sourced from Southwest and Western Australia normally, the Republic of Guinea, in Northwest Africa, Indone Indonesia, the Caribbean islands, 
um, and South America, mainly in Brazil, Guyana, and the other parts of the tropical Amazonia. Gibbsite ores are in short supply. And what does that do? What do they do with the bauxite? It lowers the cost of electrical power, manufacturing aluminium chemicals, cement, steam, integral to the petrol industry and chemical attributes. Now, the cockpit country is supposed to be a protected area, but what does that mean? According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, officially International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, it's an international organisation working in the field of nature conversation, conservation and sustainable use of natural resources. They define a protected area as being an area of land or sea especially dedicated to, to the protection and maintenance of biological diversity and of natural and associated cultural resources and manages through legal and other effective means. The cockpit country has received protective status because of their recognised natural, geological and or cultural values. Protected areas are essential for biodiversity conservation. Biodiversity conservation is about saving life on Earth in all its forms and keeping natural ecosystems functioning and healthy, often providing a habitat and protection from hunting for threatened and endangered species. So, you want to know why they want that cockpit country so bad? That is why. Um, I wanted to uh, mention something. There was quite a lot of information here. App apparently, as I mentioned earlier, 2,000 Zambian villagers sued Verdanta and their local subsidiary, copper miners in London. This is according to Dr. Mumbai, but I'm sure you can look it up. It's all there. But they've only just got through after three years. This happened in 2015. It's only just been, got the go ahead to sue. Lives have been ruined by the toxicity from the mining. Vandanta poisoned their only source of water. So you can imagine if 40% of the cockpit country, fresh water is poisoned, what is going to happen to the people? A community of 40,000 Zambian have been using this area for generations. Vendanta did not take the necessary precautions to ensure that they did not pollute the water. The river turned bright blue with sulphate. Copper, sulphur and acid was released in the water and people ended up dying or having diseases. Apparently Vendanta tried to stop them from um, trying to get from suing from London. They wanted them to sue in Zambia, but apparently Zambia, they were a bit worried that Zambia um, politicians or judges might be a little bit corrupt. So they didn't want to go through that process. And the British courts ruled that it, they would be tried in the UK. The only thing is, is that there was a loophole apparently because Vedanta had in their policy that they um, would be responsible for any um, anything for all, anything that happened adverse from their mining. So you have to make sure. I mean, I know Jamaica has signed the agreement, but they need to make sure because this happened three years ago. They might have taken out that clause that they're going to be responsible for the outcome of their mining, and there's no protection. Because at least these Zambians can get some protection and get some compensation. But if they've taken it out of the clause, out of the policy in the Jamaican um, agreement, then they're up the creek without a paddle. They're up the creek without a paddle anyway. But at least they should have some kind of form of protection so that these people don't just go in willy nilly and just dig up, dig up, knowing that they're not responsible. Um, there was something here about a Chinese mining company, which is 
I'm not quite sure if it's a Chinese mining company that's dealing in Jamaica, but there was a Chinese mining company accused of destroying Mozambique in 2015. 300 homeless, um, they got mining concession, um, corporate conduct, conduct wiped out a small village into the Indian Ocean. 160 homes were washed out into the sea. Um, it's just um, exploitation. It's, um, what else? Apparently, um, there's and some other companies that are waiting, that were waiting for this vendetta, the vendetta, vendanta case to come up to see how that, um, how that progressed. Now that they, that's now a precedent for all of these mining companies. So now they've got people who want to sh sue Unilever, apparently, Shell, BHE, something or other, Royal Dutch Shell, over pollution. So it's not no little thing that's going on. I mean, I was quite glad that I did uh, look into it because, you know, from when we think about, we take so much for granted. You know, those people that are out in the cockpit country, planting their yam, living peacefully, they don't have to go to the shop. It's like a little paradise. Everything is there. Whatever they want to eat, whatever they want to drink, it is all there. They're not interested in whether there is gold underfoot, copper underfoot, iron underfoot. They don't business about that. They just want to live their peaceful life. And because they're not a rich set of people, they can live comfortably that way. But no, no. They have these mining companies who want to come and dig it out just because of the rare minerals and resources that can only be found in certain parts of the world. I understand there's eight places where these rare limited minerals are and Jamaica is one of them. Apparently there's a place called Shell Metal X. Let me just read this. Um, yeah, I was thinking about, well, when I was writing my notes, I was thinking they're just minimising it by talking about people planting yam because the people don't understand the depth of what is going on here. Um, so they want to mine the land because it contains the most valuable and limited minerals in the world. We need to realise that it is the calcium, metal, petrol, gold, copper, energy, keppel, chemicals and iron that these prospectors want. That is what they're digging for. Whether they find it is a different thing, but apparently that part of the country is rich with rare minerals and resources or is in limited supply. Apparently there's a company called Metal X, which owns 50% stake in Renison Tin Mine. And they saw their revenue fall by 35 US million in the final quarter of 2018. So do you think that they might be on the bandwagon? Do you think they might be interested in getting all of this, these, this oil and this tin and all that kind of stuff? Of course they're going to be interested. Of course they're going to have a vested interest if they're seeing their sales plummet. Um, what else have I got here? Um, Okay, the um, cockpit country, I think it's about 29,000 acres, approximately 83 hectares. Um, and I put here the prospectors' arrogance that Jamaicans should not be entitled to such valuable resources that they don't know how to benefit from is what gets me. But can you imagine if those Jamaicans knew what they were sitting on and had the wherewithal to do what they needed to do. Jamaica would be the richest country in the world. But, you know, that's not where their head is at. And these people were killed for it. Some, I was listening to one video and they were saying that World War Three is going to happen in the Caribbean. And it wouldn't surprise me if it's got something to do with all the minerals that they've got. Ah, oh, dear. Uh, let me see what I've got here. Um, uh, 
is about destroying an area and a prospecting license, which is a permit issued by the Jamaican government, which allows the holder, the licensee, to prospect for minerals. And that has already been given. And I understand without initially conducting an environment impact assessment, which is a prerequisite for giving the license. So apparently the, um, the license was given, there was no impact assessment done. And it's not until people found out and there's been this uproar I think they probably thought that I know a lot of people think that um, Jamaicans are simple people they're not simple people love they're not simple people they're not stupid they have some of the highest brains in Jamaica and that apparently at one point they thought Andrew Holness had signed this off but it wasn't it was done as far back as 2004 that this agreement was done so um yeah, I don't know what's going to happen because when you think two months and I think most of the pay payments or most of the plans have gone ahead. I think the impact assessment is the environment impact assessment has now been completed. And, you know, these people, I don't know what's going to happen to them. I don't know. Um, apparently once they reckon that they're going around the surrounding areas but I understand that the repercussions of that will still affect the central part of the cockpit country even if they're mining around the country it's going to have a residual effect um, apparently one side of the cockpit is protected and the other side isn't but the value of that cockpit area cannot be measured with by money um, what else um, this is about a compulsory acquisition and no compensation. I mean, they will have to get compensation, but the compensation, it won't be enough. But I hope if they do have to move that they actually take it, but it won't be enough. Because can you imagine just watching your island? I mean, it's, they just cannot do it because they'll just be literally destroying the island and everything in it and all the people. All the main resources are in the cockpit country. So if they start mining in there, what is left? And everywhere there's been mining, there's been damage, collateral damage and human lives. So I don't know, compulsory acquisition is the power of government to acquire private rights in land without the willing consent of its owner or occupant in order to benefit society. How does society benefit, please? Society doesn't benefit. We know who benefits, but it's definitely not society who's going to benefit from all that gold and copper and iron and ore and all that stuff. They're definitely not going to benefit. So they need to know that a compulsory acquisition is supposed to benefit society and write out those benefits for society. I hope they've written them out. And I'm sure if they had written them out and they were feasible, there wouldn't be an uproar. But they need to have that outlined so people know what the benefits to society are. Apparently this power is often necessary for social and economical development and protection of the natural environment. The thing is, if it's supposed to be for the protection of the natural environment, why are they allowing them to destroy it and dig it up? The current, occupy, the current occupiers referred to a rockstone rebellion in order to defend their um, territory and protect it. Because there's apparently there's a lot of rock stone in the area. I don't know if it's black, but if it's black rock stone, it's supposed to be good for premature ejaculation. So you better get all you want if you've got that problem. Um, but Jamaica, it's surrounded by healing properties. And um, what else? Yeah, I think I've covered most of it. Done that. Done that. What else have I got here? Oh yeah, I did mention that. Oh, the Zambians. This is about the Zambians again. Um, 1,826 Zambian citizens living in the Copper Belt region had the right to sue Vedanta in the UK. Um, apparently they found a loophole in Vedanta to have the case prosecuted 
in the United Kingdom by a law firm called Lay Day. They're supposed to be a really high profile law firm. And yeah, they're going to get paid quite a bit, but at least they're prepared to go that far. Um, yeah, I've put all of that in the company policy of Vedanta Resources. They would be responsible for environmental and community damage by any of their subsidiaries. So, like I said, I just hope whatever release is being sold to the prospectus has got that protection for the Jamaicans. But when you think about it, what legacy are you leaving to your children? You know, from time memorial, we've been accused of selling out. Selling out for beads, selling out for this, selling out for that. And OK, the money, um, the money range has changed. OK, it's no more beads. It could be millions. But comparatively, it's peanuts. You might as well say it's beads. Um, what else? I will be done on earth as it is in heaven, as they say. Um, I said about the German villages and the lignite mining, chemical contamination, you know, and apparently where all the all the dead people, all the all the cemeteries and all the graves, they were relocated. Can you imagine? You know that your your loved ones are buried somewhere, and they're all dug up and relocated somewhere. That's what happened in this town in Germany. Um, yeah, I opened up a minefield with this. Excuse the pun when I was looking into this. But sentimentality is seen as a weakness. Um, people. These prospectors and, you know, rich people, they're not into sentimentality. You know, they're just into the money. And I just wonder, you know, as they look on photographs of their family or heirlooms or, you know, things that have been passed down to generation, how would they feel if that was robbed from them? If somebody just came in and just took it all away, how would they feel? Because that is that, in essence, is what they're doing, and uh, they're wiping out history and replacing it with modern ecosystems. Yeah, and I think that's it for now. I hope I've done the topic justice. I just thought, well, you know, I ought to look at it from a different point of view. I did watch quite a few coal mining. Um, I mean, the cockpit country videos, but I didn't see any kind of referring to the gold and the copper and the iron and all those valuable resources, which made me wonder if they actually realise the value of the cockpit country. So that is why I did this. And that's all for now. Bye bye.